Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be continuing our series on Streamlit in 2024. And specifically, we're going to be looking at how to create an interactive application, specifically with input widgets. When you're designing an application, it's important to remember that the user needs a way to interact with the data, not just see data. In this video, I'm going to show you the main ways in which we can create widgets to allow users to interact with their data and send inputs into the application. The goal of an input is to take something from the user and generate some kind of output. We're going to see a very rudimentary or simple example of this in this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to subscribe down below and stick around because I create lots of content each week on different things that deal with machine learning, natural language processing, and application development all in Python. Let's go ahead and jump into our VS Code now. If we take a look at what we're looking at, we're seeing that we already have our Streamlit application up and running, and we see that our server is running right here on our local URL. And that's what I have populated in VS Code. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our actual application looks like. We have a couple different things, specifically different titles and different subheaders. This is going to indicate where we're going to be inputting our code as we go through. The first thing we're going to look at is text inputs. Now, in Streamlit, there are two different kinds of text inputs. Let's take a look at text underscore input. We're going to create an object called text1, and we're going to make this equal to st.text underscore input. Here, we're just giving some text that's going to clarify to the user what this is supposed to do. And notice when we rerun our application, we've got a text input area right here. And this allows for us to type in some text. In other words, a user can type text into our application. If we use st.write text1, we can see that that application has not only taken that input from the user, but it allows for us to do something with it. In this case, just print it off. We also have another way to input textual data called text area. If we create text two, we can again do something very similar that we did with text input, but we'll see that our widget looks a little different. Notice that the area is a lot larger here for the user to type something in. This is better for long text sequences, and we can specify a keyword argument of height, and we can make this a bit larger for the user depending on the use case. Both of these are the ways that users can input textual data into an application. And just like before, let's go ahead and do stwrite text2, and we can write off whatever the user inputs. Notice here, I'm just saying that this is some new text. We rerun the application, and we see that the application has taken that input and printed it off. We also have the ability to take number inputs from a user. In Streamlit, we do this with the number input. So we're going to use number one here as our object name, and we're going to make this equal to st.number underscore input. And again, we're adding some text that's going to clarify for the user what this widget is supposed to do. I'm going to just paste it right here so it looks a little cleaner. And if we look at our widget here, we see that our number input has a couple different things. We can tick up and down. Let's go ahead and write off number one, and we're going to be able to see that we can go ahead and essentially generate an output from a user input. We can also specify a couple keyword arguments here, or extra arguments. Let's go ahead and use 0 and 10. This is going to tell streamlit that we want to start with a lowest minimum example of zero in the number input and a highest maximum number of 10. The third argument here too specifies that this is going to be the default value when the application loads up. Notice here we've changed it to eight and it acts that way. Another way that we can take an input from a user when it comes to numbers is by using a slider. Let's go ahead and create a streamlit slider by saying st.slider and give it some text to clarify what this widget is supposed to do. Just like the number input, we can take number inputs in from a user. But unlike the number input, instead of ticking a number up, a user can use a slider feature to slide the number up or down. And just like before, we can print off that result and see that we have exactly what we would expect, the ability to not only take a user input from a slider, but generate some kind of output. Another kind of input that we have is a Boolean input. Remember, Booleans are true or false values. In Streamlit, we can do this with a checkbox. So let's go ahead and create an object called check, and this is going to be an st.checkbox. This allows for us to create a checkbox that can allow a user to ticket yes or no, true or false. And let's go ahead and rerun our application and print off the results. Notice that when we check the box, 
our value changes from false to true. And when we untick it, it goes back to false. These are the different ways that you can take an input from a user and generate some kind of output. Now it's important that in this video we're just printing off these statements. In a real application, you'll take this input from the user and you'll do something else with it. You'll process something or you'll add that variable into a function to do some kind of task. And we're going to see all that in later videos. But for right now, practice the key ways that I've given you in this video to generate some kind of way in which a user can interact with your application. And then pop on over to the next video where we start to look at some other widgets that are available to you that you can give greater flexibility and more versatility to your application. Thank you for listening.